Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is a show where we demystify technology, make sense of all those Wi-Fi things and those ABC, 80211, PCI buses and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> he's looking at me funny again. I'm looking at you this. funny because you're wearing the same shirt. Oh yes, of course. Well, so for the Olympic fever kind of grabbed me and I know I haven't taken it off since, you know, the end of the Olympics, so I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to move on. Anyway, today on the show, we're going to be covering streaming media devices, a.k.a. getting content from your computer to somewhere else. Yes, somewhere else in the house, more, more or less. This is where it's easier to consume, I guess. Right. You can't always push grandma into your little den and close the door and have her watch the, the slideshow. Sometimes you just want to put her nicely on the couch, right? Something like that, yeah. Right. So, I mean, as uh, the days go on, everyone's getting bigger and bigger media collections. Everyone's collecting videos, they're collecting music, and they're all going on to the computer. And, and yeah, as you say, sitting there at the computer, looking at the screen inside by your desk, not necessarily the most uh, comfortable uh, user experience. So we want to get it to a place where people can enjoy themselves and relax. Perfect. Okay, good. All right, well, let's take a break. When we come back, streaming media devices demystified today on Lab Rats. Well, if you're like me, I've got like tons of music sitting on my iPod, and on my computer, and that sort of thing. But I don't always, don't always want to like play it where I am. I want to push it out to the living room or somewhere comfortable, perhaps for a party or something like that. So I know that we're going to run through a bunch of different solutions. We're going to start with audio streaming. Yes. And you know, like you, I want to listen to my music in a more comfortable uh, room of the house rather than sitting in front of my computer. And I've got tons of it. So one of the things I looked at was this device from Sonos, which is called the Zone Player. Now, you might have heard of Sonos. They've been around for a little bit. Yeah, we, we kind of ran into them a few years ago at the Consumer Electronics Show. But they don't always seem to be very pricey, though. They were a bit pricey. So when they first uh, came out, they came out with things that were aimed really at an at a enthusiast uh, level, uh, something for the audiophile, maybe. The audio files. Really high end audience. Yeah, very high end. Yeah. So uh, they've come down into the consumer space now with this Zone Player S5, S, I guess, for speakers. It's a, essentially a speaker. The previous ones look more like uh, components uh, for, uh, well, a, a stereo system. Very, very expensive, you know, big speakers attached to them, or just a big amplifier style device. And this mm -hmm. is more consumer friendly, like a Ghetto mm -hmm. Blaster. All right. So, uh, so should we, let's do a demo. So demo, okay. If you dare. All right. Well, the, the demo can be tricky. So the, here's the concept first. Yeah. So you've got your computer and your uh, external hard drive in the other room where all of your music lies, and you want to bring it over to this device. Yeah. So you can either plug this directly into the network using the Ethernet port on the back here. Right. But it is wireless as well. Okay. The trick is you need at least one point plugged into your, uh, your home network to create a mesh network around your house. Mm -hmm. So if this one can't go straight to wireless to your home router, it needs another point first. So if, if this isn't going to go directly into Ethernet, you can get this zone bridge right here, which does that for you. So it's about $100 to add to that. Now, if you have something right beside your Ethernet port, you can plug it straight into here, and that's great. The nice thing about the system here, and it is a system, you can start adding others to your network and create zones around your house. That's why it's called a zone player, right? right. Uh, and then all of these can play music at the same time, the same song at the same time, or they can play different songs in different zones. Okay, so this, so let's say I have four of these. Right. Two downstairs in front and back of the house, two upstairs, front and back of the house, bedroom, perhaps den or something like, or uh, office, mm -hmm. right? So then I can basically target, I can say, listen, I'm gonna have an open house party, I'm gonna play some nice music, play my music to all four speakers. Right. Right. And then my wife decides she's going to, then after the party, my wife's going to go to bed, but I'm going to stay and watch some TV downstairs, or I'm just going to chill out and have a beer or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I can say, okay, turn them off upstairs and play sleeping music. Mm -hmm. And then downstairs, continue to play good music that I want to listen to to chill out to. Right. Or, or if, if she's at the party and she said, I'm finally sick of all this ABBA music at Andy's ABBA party. Yes. I want to go downstairs and listen to BTO. Yes. She can peel one off and uh, start listening to her own music while the rest of the speakers are doing. Well, she's a rocking chick, so it would yeah. make sense. So there you go. Yeah. So to control this, you can either do it from your computer, but yeah. the nice thing is you can actually do it from an iPhone or an iPod. So there's a little app you can get, and I've got it right here. It's the Sonos Zone Player app. Okay. And uh, I've got it listed as being kitchen, because this is where we keep this in my house. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we don't have the internet there, but I want my music in the, in the kitchen while I'm cooking. Okay, so this is talking to your, the router. This is talking and to my this router. this is tuned into the router as well. This is tuned into this, which is plugged into the router. Okay, got it. So it basically creates one access point to your router and then creates a mesh network with all your Sonos devices. I see, okay, good. So now to, to play something, I would go into kitchen, and I've got right now queued up uh, right now the Beatles, so I'll click on that and press play. And there we go. 
it's playing that. So if I want to uh, play something else, I'll go back into my music library and uh, click on an artist. And I don't think we have BTO here, but I can just pick anything else at random. So let's say The Cult. It'll look through all of the stuff I've got there and go for, uh, for something else and uh, play it now and it'll change the tracks. I'm just doing all this from my iPhone or the iPod Touch. So Very good. there you go, fairly simple. Yeah. Uh, the really nice thing, I'll just turn that off now. Whoops. And uh, the nice thing about it is you also have access to all of the internet uh, radio stations that Sonos has set up as well. So there's like thousands of stations that you can go to. I went to my old Brandon radio stations that are set up on the internet and I can listen to those. Not that I want to, but you can. Um, I can if yeah. I want to. So I think this would be great for expats, people that are not no living in the, the country that they came from, right? And they can use the internet to tune into, you know, Radio Europe or if they're living in Europe, you know, the old, uh, you know, the, the radio station from back home. Exactly. So, I mean, you've got the internet and you've got all of your own music, which you can pull from anywhere else in your house that uh, you can share a drive from. It's a nice all-in-one solution. Hmm. Now, using the app uh, the, on your iPhone as a solution isn't necessarily always the best. You can buy a special dedicated remote for a couple hundred dollars for it, which is a bit pricey. Um, for free, you can do this, but you have to suffer through, okay, if your phone locks, you have to log in and go back to it, go back to the app and all of that. So it's not the most instantaneous remote, but it is free and uh, fairly easy to use. Very good. Okay. So, that's so now, one thing. So that's the Sonos, and uh, pricing is this tab? Well, we, we can talk about pricing later? or uh, The price for that one uh, is $399 US for the, the Zone Player itself, and if you need the bridge, and I said you don't absolutely need it, but if you want the bridge to expand your network, it's uh, $99 Very good. for that. Okay. So. Now, what if I want to move video around the house? If you want to move video, there's a few different options here. Now, this isn't brand new. This one is. This this one is actually pretty new here. So let's take the wrapping off of it. So now, in in the past, there have been devices that stream video, and they have not been good. They've been crummy. A lot of them have been crummy, with one notable exception, uh -huh. which you already know about. There's a new kid in town right here that just does high definition video for the internet generation. Now, yeah. this isn't designed to move video around your house, but if you're going to be watching your internet video anyhow, this is one nice solution. So it's called the Roku HD XR, mm -hmm. HD for high def. It mm -hmm. uh, plays high definition content, right. connects to your television using uh, HDMI cable uh, or some of the usual HD cable. So we've got, uh, we've got a uh, component that. and we've got uh, the uh, regular uh, a composite connector as well. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to watch in HD or you can't for whatever reason your TV doesn't support it, you can connect it using the old school video cable. Uh, and then it's got an internet or an Ethernet port in the back, but it's also wireless. So, Good. so here we go. We uh, there's something I forgot about. I'm crane around right. to that. But there you go. So it's it's very very much channel based here. So instead of uh, saying I want to watch uh, this video on my thing, you say okay, I want to go to the Netflix channel. Okay. And if you're in the States, you can download, download videos movies and that sort of thing, Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can go to Amazon Video. Right. If you have a subscription to Major League Baseball, you can go to MLB right, right. here. Yeah. Um, you can also set up your Facebook uh, account uh, to retrieve photos from your friends. Right. Uh, you can have a Flickr one as well. We've got Revision 3, the internet uh, uh, channel. And uh, we've also got Twit. So and one of these days, Butterscotch. Yeah, we're working on it. So the nice thing about this is there's a limited number of channels that are on available on here right now because they're just getting started with this player. However, you can uh, apply to develop a channel and uh, put all of your own content in there. You can set up private channels so that if you don't want it available through their store, you can actually have it available with a special code that will actually push it on the back end to your box. Right. Your box logs into their end with a special code to say, I'm here. And uh, it authorizes you to play certain kinds of content. Right. So again, we would just uh, select the, uh, the channel we want inside this uh, uh, category. So we'll go into This Week in Tech Video, and then we can uh, start playing this, and it'll start streaming over the network. Yeah. You can see all the details here, and away you go. Very now, cool. there's a little bit of buffering, because it is internet uh, video after all. So this is from the internet to your TV? From the internet to your TV. Right. So it's, OK, good. Okay, and this but I know that they do have an application where you can upload your stuff um, to a private service and then make it available to grandma and to your uncles. Right. You know, home videos and that sort of thing. Yeah, so that would be the private uh, The private side solution of that so we're talking about. Okay. You've got both of them. So rather than yeah. watching this buffer, which is not really all that interesting, um, you know, you'll get this at home. It'll take a little bit. It's not like TV where it's just instant on, such as the, uh, the danger of Such as the generation the thus far, but it'll change, right? Right. So there you go. You've got uh, all of these channels that uh, you can log in. Now, one of the things we saw at CES this uh, past year was Boxy. 
Yay, Boxy! We saw the Boxy box. Now, yeah. people may know Boxy from the past as a, an application you could download. You can uh, put it on your uh, Windows machine, you can put it on your Mac machine, you can put it on the Apple TV even, and uh, hack your Apple TV box to play Boxy. Mm -hmm. And Boxy, the company finally said, you know what, let's do this in hardware as well, because a lot of people don't want to have to deal with all the computer aspect of it. They just want to plug a box into their computer network, or into their television, sorry, and pull automatically. Mm -hmm. So Boxy will do this. Now, the Boxy box itself, not available yet. Soon, though. Very soon. Price, they're thinking around $200, I think, but again, not determined 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, looks a little bit odd, so you can't stack anything on top of it. Uh, the really nice thing about it, it does have a remote control that comes with it, uh, which uh, some of these don't have full controls. When you want to type anything into the thing, you're just seeing there scroll, 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 using the, the arrow keys. On, with an on-screen keyboard. Not very nice. Flip the boxy remote around and you've got an actual QWERTY keyboard in mm, hardware mode. Very clever, yeah, yeah. Which is nice. Exactly. But and you're probably sitting there saying, I can't wait for it to come out. I am sitting here going, I can't wait for it to come out. I knew you were. Mm -hmm. So, why not roll your own while you're waiting? Ooh. So. Oh, by the way, D-Link uh, yes. is going to be making the boxy box. D-Link is making the I actually had a chat box. with them recently and uh, we will have a Butterscotch channel too on the, uh, the boxy box when it comes out. Here you go. So we're going to get Butterscotch everywhere we can stream content. That's so right. Now with this right here, I've, I've actually taken a, a net top here, which is the Aspire Revo from Acer. The it's, net top. It's designed to be essentially on top of your computer and bring the net to your computer. Right. So this ships, uh, it, it comes with an uh, NVIDIA ION system inside, so a little uh, Atom processor, a, fairly high quality uh, video card, uh, but it is a full-on computer, so you can get it with mm -hmm. Windows. I've put Ubuntu on here for, you know, a few reasons, uh, including stability, but, uh, and it runs a little bit cooler, I believe, but you can see it has all of the connectors on here. Uh, you've got uh, uh, USB, uh, you've got uh, HDMI, you've got a VGA out if you're looking for connecting it to a monitor. On the front, you've got a place to plug all of your, uh, all of your, uh, memory cards from your cameras and mm -hmm. your other devices. Cool. But this is running a hard drive inside and it's running, like I said, Ubuntu with Boxy running on top of it. So right. again, we've got... Uh, so, this. You use, so this is a basically a Linux machine and you've downloaded the Boxy app onto this right. and you're running it full screen. Right, so you can get these starting at about $200, maybe about $350 if you buy it brand new and at the top of the line. And then you just use the mouse and keyboard to come with it to you know, go and check to see what you got on here. So I've got huh. music right on the box, but I could pull from the network elsewhere. So take it from my uh, computer, I could take it from a network drive. You can log into, into those devices and uh, stream it. You can do the same with video. Um, but the nice thing about the Boxy setup is it also has channels as well. So you can go to... TV shows and, and apps, and this is this is where it gets fun. So you've got apps, and we're working on an, a boxy app for Butterscotch mm -hmm. as yeah, well. That's right. But we've got YouTube, we've got uh, Rev3, we've got Flickr, we've got Wired, all of these other things you can add more. You can download them and put them on here. Stream it from elsewhere on the net, like we did with the, the Sonos to here, and like we did with Roku to here. Hmm. So it's not just strictly an internal thing. You can play all of, the device, all, all of your media files from here, or from your other devices, or from the cloud. Right. And there you go, and you can roll your own. Nice. Boxy's free, Ubuntu is free, you can run it on Windows if you keep Windows on there, and uh, away you go. That's amazing, good stuff, that's great. Um, and before we break, I guess Apple TV would break, be the other thing, right? We do have Apple TV, and uh, this one is not exactly new, so we won't spend too much uh, time on this, but uh, we do have the Apple TV running over here in the background. Uh, the big news here is that since uh, we looked at it a while back, and we took a look while I was still in Vancouver, and we did an episode from there, this one right here is running a new interface. So it's uh, version 3.0 of the interface, which has a more stylized design here. Not a ton of uh, other stuff added in terms of functionality, except it, it's just slicker. It has... It has um, they said just a, basically a different way to interface with sure. it, more yeah, or yeah. less. So, uh, and uh, makes it a little bit more intuitive. Some people don't like this design. If you're familiar with the old one, I don't know which one you have. If you have, this I had one I had the old one and the new one, and uh, I prefer this. You prefer much this? way easier to to get your content. So there you go. So it's just a different way. So if you've got an Apple TV already, then uh, go out and uh, get the app or the update for this. If you don't have the Apple TV, well, it's still available. 
not necessarily the best-selling uh, Apple product of all time, uh, but it's still there, about 229, and uh, it's about 160 gigs on the hard drive. I actually hacked mine so that I put a 250 gig drive on there back when it was still around 40 uh, gigs on it, and you can actually uh, hack it up to about 500 if you it's want. It's great, though. I mean, you, can, you can get any content if, from your computer, as long as you can convert it so it's iTunes compatible, and you mm -hmm. can dump it onto here, which is amazing. And, of course, it has an easy way to get your photos on there as well. Yeah, and the, the nice thing about it as well is that it's got iTunes uh, functionality uh, pretty much tightly bundled into this. So yeah. if you can download things from iTunes, you can put it on there. So you got an iTunes account, you can download videos from the iTunes store, you can download your music from the iTunes store, and you can even do it straight from the and device. And tons of TV shows. Yeah, there tons you go. Of, tons yeah. of stuff. And you know, it's hackable too. You, it's not just hackable from a hardware perspective, but uh, you have been able to put the Boxy software on there in the past. I don't know that uh, it works right now with the newest version of Boxy. But you can also add other hacks to it that allow it to play other types of content, including DivX, the, the other formats that it doesn't play naturally right now. So right. it's a very hackable, customizable box. So very nice. And that runs uh, that. two, three hundred bucks, right? Yeah, about two hundred and twenty-nine. Yeah. I think. Yeah, good, good. All right, let's take a break, and when we come back, we're going to show you a little sneak preview of the Boxy Box, some coverage we did at the Consumer Electronics Show, as well as your pictures on Picture Time. That's after this. Well, as you know, we go to the Consumer Electronics Show every year uh, to see what the hottest new gadgets are. And of course, this year, we saw the Boxy Box, which is this device from D-Link being uh, manufactured to show the Boxy service you know, on your television. So uh, let's take a look at that. I think it's me. It was me, actually, talking to those you? guys. So let's have a, clip, a, a look at that clip. And when we come back, it's picture time. Welcome on deck. I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. So as you can see on the back, we've got uh, a wired Ethernet port. We also support wireless 802.11n, uh, HDMI out for video, optical audio out, and stereo uh, out as well. And then two USB ports for plugging in any peripherals like external storage. Yeah. Um, the remote actually functions on RF, so you can use it without having to worry about pointing uh, it anywhere. You can be in the kitchen stirring the pot and actually change it through the wall. And you can turn off the music on Pandora, or skip to the next song, change the volume. Um, all that great stuff. So that's the Boxy Box. If you want to see the whole clip, of course, go on over to butterscotch.com, check out the show at, and you'll find it. No problem. I've got another way to create a, your own Boxy Box. You do? Yeah. Basically, you take a box and squash the edge in like that. Hey, then, don't mock D-Link's design. I like, quite like it, actually. And then try to put uh, your remote on top of it. So sad. Anyway, if you want to send uh, comments about him and his behavior, you, or you want to send uh, your pictures, um, which we're about to show in a minute, you can email them too. Boxy is a funny shaped uh, device, even though it plays good content. Or yeah. more simply. Um, oh, that was at, at labrats.tv, by the way. Oh, thank you. But you should send it to feedback at labrats.tv. Right. And these following people have actually done that, so let's look at a couple of pictures. All right. Well, first up, we've got, uh, speaking of uh, media streaming, We've got this setup uh, here from uh, Jeff, who is in Atlanta. Now, the one thing that we didn't talk about here, and uh, people out there that have them probably already know this, you can actually stream from uh, your or to your Xbox and to your PS3. So you've got other devices that are already on your network, hopefully, uh, that can do this. Very cool. So look for the ways to do that. I love this. It's Jeff, and he's from Atlanta. We know both of those things, and we know about his setup. Yep. That's the go. perfect yeah, way to send us there. email. Yeah, I love it. And a nice picture that actually is the right resolution. And it was relevant to our show, in fact, as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff from Atlanta. We love you. All right, and next? Next, we have a uh, photo from our viewer, Michael. Michael! That's all I got. Don't it's know where Michael. he's from. Don't know why his hair is on his chin and not on his head. Where he is. Oh, is that, a, is that in a dorm room or something? Could be. I don't know. All right, Michael, well, Michael, thank you. We want to know where you're from, yeah, though. Let us know. Let us know. All right. Well, we already told you the email address, so we're not going to repeat it again, are we? No. No. See. We could. But well, okay. So if you want to send your pictures with your name and your location and what's in them, send it to. Send us your darn uh, email address and your name and the name of your pets and the name of everything and all that other good stuff when you're sending us email at labrats.tv. <laughs> or more simply, <laughs> feedback at labrats.tv. Uh -huh. All right. Don't forget, there's tons more content where this came from. Lots of episodes of Labrats uh, plus show notes on butterscotch.com. I think we have another uh, dozen or so uh, titles, shows, tutorials, 2,000 pieces of video. In fact, by now, the time you watch is probably more like 2,500 pieces of video on that site. So go check it out. It teaches you all about technology. Any final thoughts, Mr. Crothers? 
Just one thing, I, I did uh, show off the, uh, the boxy box, and the one thing I did want to note about that that I didn't show off earlier is there is an iPhone app for it as well. Okay. It has a gesture-based or, or basic functionality. It's nowhere near as nice as the Sonos app, but it is out there, and it is free if you want to get it. There you so go. That, that's it. That's all I got. Final words from Sean Carruthers. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. We'll see you next time. Hey, hey, stop it. Are you ready? And input eight will be the Apple TV. I love Apple TV. Do you? Oh my God. It's awesome.